the church puts quite a bit of emphasis on Holy Communion. And one of the things that unfortunately gets lost in the idea of Holy Communion is the reading of the prayers before receiving Holy Communion. And so I talked a little bit about that yesterday. I talked about one particular paragraph, and I want to talk now about another paragraph. So all of you have this Divine Liturgy book. I know you don't have it now because of the pandemic. I, I understand that. Okay, but you have seen this book for pretty much your entire life. And if you were in Greece, you read it in Greek, so you've already seen it. But what happens is that many times we forget what is placed in here. Yesterday, in the Gospel reading, it talked now about following false prophets and, and, and following those, those people or, or taking too much stock into the destruction of the, of the nations and, and all of these things that are predicted to come. And each generation thinks that they are living in that particular generation. At some point, somebody will be right because Jesus will come back at their time. But it's been 2,000 years, and what ends up happening is people get, people kind of cool down. So those people, those Christians that were living in the time of St. Paul, when he said things like, it's better that you don't get married and you stay single, because they were thinking imminently that Christ was coming very, very soon. 2,000 years passes, and what happens? People lose interest. They forget about the fact that this is a reality. And this is, uh, and so it's not something new for us. This was John, uh, St. John Christmas and St. Basil were preaching about this, about people becoming lukewarm. And so this is nothing new. So our generation isn't any, any worse or any better than the previous generations. Although sometimes as we get older, we tend to think that, you know, we forget how crazy we were when we were young. And so we tend to blame the new generation and say, you guys don't even know what you're doing. Actually, we were worse than you guys. I'm telling you that right now. As a, uh, as a son of the 70s, trust me, you're, you can't even come close to us. So don't even, don't even think about it. All right. So I started yesterday and I talked about, it says here, how shall I so unworthily come into the splendor of your saints? For if I dare enter the bridal feast, my clothing will accuse me. And so we talked yesterday about this idea that when you stand before judgment, will you be, or how will you be accused? And the stain on your baptismal garment represents doing and following those things that you know are against who the church is. And in today's reading, you know, so what you got yesterday was you got, don't do this, don't follow those people. And what you get today in the gospel is you get Judgment Sunday. And so here now, he outright tells you what the accusation will be. So now, when, you, when it says here, if I dare enter the bridal feast, right, my clothing will, acu will accuse me or disgrace me, now, today, you actually get to hear what it is. And what is it? It's very, very clear. I was hungry, I was thirsty, you, I was a stranger, I was naked, I was sick, I was in prison. Those are your judgment calls. Those of you that say, just like, just like Martin Luther, and you say, well, as long as I have faith, faith is good enough and works doesn't matter. Well, there it is right there. <laughs> Jesus Christ tells you and says, works matter. Now, the problem is you don't do works to get into heaven. This is not the great Las Vegas deal. Let me put some money in, hoping I'm going to get something out. Going to heaven is not Vegas. What heaven is, are these things that he's talking about in here. And he makes it very clear. Those of you that do this shall inherit the kingdom of heaven, sit on my right hand. Those of you that ignore this and disgrace your wedding garment, or better yet, your baptismal garment, and you stain that, then you are off to the left into the abyss. Kolasi, I think, is the word that they use there in the gospel. And so... The next line in the communion prayer is, 
loving master, Lord Jesus Christ, let not these holy gifts be a judgment against me because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of both soul and body. The next line says, okay, you will be accused. What does your garment look like? The next line says, please, O Lord, have mercy on me and do not let my unworthiness be like a stain and be a judgment from what we heard today in the gospel reading, but let it cleanse my soul and my body. So this is the hope. This is why you come up for communion. You don't come up for communion as as I learned, unfortunately, which was come up when you are worthy. Well, that that's never going to happen because you and I are never worthy to receive communion. You've heard me say it and I keep on saying it. You come to communion because you desire to cleanse the baptismal garment that you have stained during the week or the month or the every six months, whatever, however often it is that you feel ready to come to communion. And so these prayers are important to be read because if we don't heed the words that are in here, then it becomes a halftime snack. The priest is talking, it's boring, but at least I'll get some wine and a little bit of sustenance so I can endure the other half of the liturgy. If this is how you are treating Holy Communion, then hell awaits you. Come into the kingdom of hell. You drink unto your own condemnation. Every single time that I place that body in my hand, I am absolutely terrified. I am absolutely terrified because I know what I am doing and I know the mistakes and the sins that I've made in the week. And it terrifies me to put that in my mouth. But because of the words that I read just before, let it be for the cleansing and sanctification of both soul and body. My hope and prayer is that that is what it will do. But it's not enough just to say, this is what I'm going to do. We've got tons of people, right, that want to be pilots. I'm going to be a pilot someday. I'm going to be a priest someday. I'm going to be an accountant someday. Oh, well, somebody probably says that. But they never follow through. It's the same thing here. Let this be for the cleansing and sanctification of my soul and body. And then you walk out the door, you get in your car, and you're cursing out the guy that cuts you off. Or you're telling your aunt or uncle, hey, I'm tired of this, you know, or how come you're not giving me enough money? So we walk out that door and we forget what we're doing here. If you are not terrified when you receive Holy Communion, you don't, you shouldn't come up and get it. I cannot be clearer. So read the communion prayers when you come up or before you come up so that you can understand what it is that you do. This is a truly loving God. But, this, but what the gospel that you read today should put that fear into you. But not a fear of, I don't want to do it, but just recognizing that he is truly an awesome God. <laughs>